that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of, of all of this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You... You don't know? Bah. I gave you waste my time. I don't know, because he never told us. The murderer is, is the care... The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop. Well, where did he do all, do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way to the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not a boat? What? Well, well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. Oh god, uh, it probably took place here, to be quite honest. Because that's still close enough to trigger that for the photo to be taken, right? Here, of course! The boat shop where he lives! That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's staring, starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright, what happened that the night on Gord Lake? Tell me, tell the court from the beginning. Try it again. Tell the court from the beginning. Please, Please tell the court. Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out in the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol uh, on the boat, Miss Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Well, wait a minute. Yes. Why would he shoot twice and didn't even mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first shot. Next, the murderer waits a bit, and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol and the boat behind. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake... It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. 
That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Boss! Bailiff. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before! The shop caretaker! Quickly! Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, where, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't really say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Balf. Bailiff. Bailiff. What we are, are considering a We are trial. conducting... A trial here. I ask you to remain quiet. Try it again. Read the thing. Oh, just let me be. We are conducting... Bailiff. Bailiff. Bailiff! We are conducting a Con trial... Con conducting! Quit screaming. It's going to ruin the audio. Conducting... Conducting. Conducting a trial here. I ask you to remain quiet. I ask that you remain quiet. I ask that you remain quiet. The are, witness has are, disappeared. Are the the witness has disappeared. He isn't in the boat shop either. What? What did I do? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Ron Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying, I cannot declare a verdict, verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find the, that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is the boat shop caretaker? I think it's indefinitely his identity. His identity has to be become very important to this trial. Do you know what identity means? Yes. Oh my god. Why don't you tell the class what does identity mean? It's who you are. Good job. I want him. And I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. 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 Try it again. Uh, very well. The court is adjourned. Okay. Are, are we stopping you? Yeah, we're almost done. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? 
Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're really probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. To be continued. Alright, what did you guys think about that? It was mm. exciting. You liked it? Yep, I liked it. Well, now, thank you. everybody. For doing that with me. I appreciate it. I'm gonna check out my room. Here you go. Ow! Thank you guys. I enjoyed it.